Hello, welcome to Aussie Wristwatch. I'm Jessica Liley. This is the channel where I talk about my love of watches. <laughs> Today I am wearing my Paterai merch because we are going to be discussing the submersible 44 E Steel range. Um, in very brief detail, I must add. But I got to try these on recently. I really liked them. So let's talk a little bit about them. But before that, let's roll the intro. Okay, so you guys, if you've watched this channel, understand that I love Panerai and I'm a big fan of the Luminor range and I have a Luminor Due 45 uh, GMT and I've got a classic um, Pam 422 which is a 47 mil which wears quite large on the wrist and I love it. I get some really funny comments about that in the, in the comments. Some people are like yeah you rocking a big watch you go girl and others are like you wearing a watch to look like a man which actually just makes me laugh but anywho today I thought I'd check out <laughs> sorry I can't help myself because there's some funny people out there. Today I thought I'd check out the submersibles. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is because honestly, no matter how much I love Panerai, I've really been luminal. Luminal, 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 the whole way. I have not really looked ever at the submersibles because uh, at the times that I've been in, I've just kind of seen those big ginormous black ones with that really steel ugly I don't know it just hasn't really sung to me it's too bit too beefy even for me and and the radio mirror I just because it doesn't have that classic crown guard I just have steered clear I did recently try on a radio mirror that I absolutely fell in love with but we will do that as a separate video when I'm allowed to post it because it's currently uh it hasn't been released but anywho Okay, the submersible Coranta Quattro is an e-steel watch, which I joke when I go in there with the AD who's, who I have a good relationship with. I call him out, it's the woke watch, which some people are going to roll, the, roll their eyes at or, or applaud me. I don't know. Um, I'm not against it. I just think it's really funny. But I was told um, by one of the reps at Panerai that it's going to be a, a far more regular um material used in their watches over the next five years. So we're definitely moving into a sustainable um, era, uh, even with watches. So it'll be interesting to see what other watch brands do around that. But yet Panerai are very much in the E-Steel kind of realm. And at E-Steel, a bit about what it was, it began as a 98.6% recycled titanium. And then it's, it's then also continued with a 58.4% recycled e-steel from the Luminor Mariner. So it's a mix of, it's a sustainable watch. It actually, that doesn't tell me what it is at all. Um, if someone actually knows what the e-steel is and how it, how it is sustainable, let, let us know. That'd be really great. I'd actually really appreciate that. The watches I tried on were, there were three different colors effectively. So there was a green, which they call the Verde Speraldo. There was, uh, I would call it gray, <laughs> and they call that Grigio Roccia. I think I might have pronounced that correctly, but I'm not too sure. And finally, there is a blue, which is basically blue profondo. I think I actually pronounced that correctly. Um, that was really fun. And there's something very cool about the, the color on all of their dials is is kind of two-toned and it's got this really great effect that it has in particular i noticed it a lot on the gray model um and just to be clear the one that they call the grigio roccia um or the grigio roccia in australian but uh, <laughs> um which i actually really really liked I, I, blue is my favorite color but I, I really liked the Grigio. Um, I think because it's kind of gray and black, it's gonna go with everything. I already have like some blue watches, like I'm wearing my tag Hoya Monaco today. It's a beautiful blue watch on an amazing alligator strap. Yeah, so three, three colors. I also like the green. I just wonder whether green is gonna be a bad color. 
I don't know. You guys tell me, because I'm honestly, I'm I'm a little torn. I've seen some amazing green watches lately, including Breitling, the other time they've got this emerald green, which it pops and it's amazing. But I just, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's going to get a bit dated. Anywho. Okay. Let's talk specs. The watches retail Australian for 16,200. They are automatic mechanical with the P900 caliber, which is 4.2 millimeters thick. It has 23 joules and it's got an anti-shock device with a power reserve of three days, one barrel, 171 components. The functions, it's got an hours, minutes, small seconds and date. The case is 44 millimeters in diameter and it's brushed E-steel. The bezel is the E-steel ceramic anti-clockwise rotating bezel with a graduated scale. The back is a screw back. It's not a screw back, it's a screw back <laughs> with brushed E-steel. The dial is arthracite polished gradient with luminous hour markers and dots, um, not numbers and the date's at three o'clock and the small seconds hand is at the nine o'clock or the small seconds dial, pardon me, is at nine o'clock. It's 300 meters water resistant, so 30 bar. It is a submersible, it's, do, it's, jo, it's job is a dive watch, so hence 300 meters. The strap is two, it's a tone on tone stitching strap and it's actually, so it's like, it's basically, in my view, it's a cloth strap. It's a very, very nice one um, and it's very comfortable. So it's it's a pin buckle um, attachment from memory and it fits really well. It feels really well. I've worn the submersible with the rubber strap, which kind of tapers in towards your skin. And for me, it actually pinches. Whereas on the Luminor, when I wear the rubber strap, it, it's really comfortable. So it's really funny how like a slightly different design in the strap can just totally fuck up your day. Um, and I've just sworn and someone else is gonna unsubscribe like the grumpy old guy who commented the other week. I had a guy watch all my videos and comment on how good they were. And then, well, I'm over exaggerating. He probably watched like four. Um, and then I got to the last comment and he's like, you need to watch your language, unsubscribe. <laughs> and I was like, oh fuck. If he's worried about me swearing, he really can't watch my channel. So anyway, I digress. <laughs> I don't know whether he would have said that if I was a dude, but that's probably a discussion for another day. Look, this is the first Panerai submersible I've tried on that I've gone, shit, I could buy that. I really like that watch. It just, it looks super cool, really classy, notwithstanding it's quite sporty on that strap, but it's still able to be dressed up as well as dressed down. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a tool watch, right? It's for diving. I mean, again, and I say this every time I review a dive watch, particularly like a dive watch that costs thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, this is $16,000, people. I'm not diving with that. I mean, I'm diving with that, A, if I dive, and B, if I'm a multi-millionaire, maybe. But even then, I'm probably gonna dive with, I don't know, electronic apparatus. And maybe, maybe my Luminox or a G-Shock. I don't know, but I'll leave that for you guys to tell me. I've also got a list going, by the way, of other dive watches of any kind that you all have recommended to me, which I will make my way through to, to complete a, another video. Because I want to learn about all of these watches. I lean towards Panerai and other brands because A, I either know them or I just love them. And I do, I love, I love this brand and I'm happy to admit that. And these watches only continue to add to that joy and love by presenting a watch that I've, I've actually enjoyed trying on and would happily add to my collection if, if there weren't so many other watches I'd already had on my list ahead of it. As I said, the Grigio is probably the color for me, but the green and the blue are also exceptionally nice. There is, it's not quite of this model, but there is a Luna Ross version similar to these out. Uh, and that is a limited edition, which basically celebrates the whole relationship of the Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team. Um, so yacht, yacht racing team, 
or a sailing team, you can get my words right. Anyway, and you put that watch on and you definitely feel like you need to be a member of a yacht club to wear it. It's just got that vibe to it, but that's what makes it a really actually cool watch. Um, it's very similar to the ones we've just talked about, but it's not, it's not an e-steel product. But again, it's pretty classy. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it. It's, the, it's still 44 mil, so it's still in that, that sweet spot. Because I have to say, like a 44 mil in a Panerai is a sweet spot. It's going to suit most people. It suits me. Um, and I can wear the big ones and I can wear the little one. 44 is a sweet spot. Um, yeah, so that's also a fun watch. But for me, the East Steels are growing on me. I, I joke it's a woke watch. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who cares? It's actually a really nice watch. And if it means it's somewhat sustainable in this somewhat unsustainable world we're living in at the moment, then great <laughs> thank you for watching do me a favor guys if you enjoyed this video hit the like button for me and if you haven't already subscribe and do come back um you know some of these videos are a little waffly and other ones are more technical and specific but i'm just at the end of the day someone who loves watches trying to have a bit of light-hearted fun and learn a little something in the process thanks again guys bye